Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm going to be going through and ranking all of my concealers and foundations. As we are going on week 13 of, well technically, you know, I'm in New Jersey, technically the stay-at-home order was lifted this week, but a lot of things still aren't opening up until the end of this month, which is June, so I, I haven't been going anywhere. I've been staying here, I've been doing a lot less shopping, and I've just been using up a lot of what I have in my makeup collection because I'm still wearing makeup every day because I like it, it's fun, I can play with it and use it up. So I've actually panned quite a few foundations and a couple of concealers, and now that I have like a, a manageable amount left, I have like 10 foundations left, and I have like less than 10 concealer. So I thought if any time if there was to rank what I have left, it would be now <laughs> before my collection gets a little bit bigger, which I'm sure it probably will when I can go back out shopping again, even though I really don't need to. I've really liked using up what I have. I've thought about doing um, a couple of other ranking videos. I'm thinking for my next live stream, which may be next week, I want to rank all my face palettes because those are fun and I love messing with face palettes. So uh, I'm also, <laughs> don't hold me to this yet because I have a hundred of them. I was looking into ranking all my eyeshadow palettes, but like I said, there's a hundred of them. <laughs> I have them all documented in an Excel sheet and I'm working my way through, but I don't have a final list yet. So it's going to take me a while to get to that. But if you guys want to see it, I'll go through and keep doing it. So yeah, we've got, uh, we're going to do foundations and concealers today. I'm going to do face palettes next week, probably. Eyeshadow palettes eventually. If there's any other category in my collection that you want me to rank, let me know down below if you find these kind of interesting. So let's start with concealers. And this is actually going to be pretty tough because I actually like all the concealers I have right now. Because I only have a couple left. But the first one, I'm going to put this at the bottom because I just don't use it that much. And I don't, I don't know why I bought a backup because I'll never use this whole thing up. This is Dermacol. Technically, this is a foundation. With my skin type and the way that I would use this, I cannot use this on my full face. It just, it doesn't look good on me or my skin. That doesn't mean you can't use this as a foundation. Um, Taylor Wynn's video from way back in the day, I think it was right when like I first found her channel, she did, she used this for her 15 days of foundation and it looked awesome on her skin as a full foundation. I normally use this to spot conceal and because you literally only need a tiny, tiny drop of product to get full coverage, I'm not going through this. I've had this tube for like two years and I'm nowhere near finishing it and I bought a backup. Why did I get a backup? I really don't need this because I'm never going to finish this. Ugh. Anyway, not to say that this is a bad concealer. It's an awesome concealer. I just don't use it as much because, you know, I was going to say knock on wood. Thankfully, I haven't had the big breakouts that I would have to cover up with Dermacol. Like, I've got a few ones down here, but nothing huge. Like, I used to have this really big, almost kind of cyst thing on my nose a while ago, and that's where I would use this to cover that up, but I haven't had anything, you know, big happen since. So this kind of st stays in my concealer drawer because I don't use it as much, but it's a great product. And really, if you haven't tried it out, I really would recommend it if you're looking for something that is super full coverage. I found mine on Amazon, but you have to be very careful because it's really hard to shade match this product. I have the shade 210, which for me, it might now be a bit dark, but I still think this is my best shade match that I'm going to find in this uh, line because I don't think it has that many shades, unfortunately. So after Dermacol, I'm going to put in one of my newer concealers, and this is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Concealer, Hyd or Hydroronic Creamy Concealer, excuse me. This one is just like an okay concealer. I've had really rotten luck with ColourPop base products. I've tried out both their foundations, which are trash on my skin. I tried their face powder. I tried their um, other concealer, the one that came out before this one. Nothing worked. So at least this one works decently on my skin. <laughs> I am trying to use it up now along with the next found the next concealer in this list, but it's just an okay concealer. Like there are other more affordable or just as affordable options that I love more. So I'm probably never going to rebuy this, but it did work, <laughs> which is more than I can say for literally any other ColourPop base product I have tried. And for reference, what shade did I get? Fair 15W. That's my shade. And it actually matches me now because <sighs> pale. Next concealer, this one I'm actually almost done using up completely. This is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Hydrate. 
Comparing this to the Conceal and Define, I think I like the Conceal and Define better, but they're really not, there's not a huge difference in the two formulas, other than I feel like this one, it is a bit, I want to say like thicker. It feels a bit thicker, it looks thicker going on. They're both full covered, and I do really like this concealer. The one thing I hate is the packaging, because like the stopper that's right here that you can normally like on other concealers pop off and then really scrape out all the product. I have the hardest time getting the stopper off of these. And like this one, I'm pretty sure I just push the stopper to the very bottom. So I'm never gonna be able to like scrape out all the product. So that is my one like annoyance with these products because I love using up the full concealer tube. Like uh, other examples that I really like, I love squeezy tubes because you can get everything out. I love uh, concealers that have an easier to remove stopper so I can pop it out and get everything out. That's the only downside to this concealer is that it's really affordable, it's a great concealer, but I hate the packaging. It also gets really messy even though like I clean this every time I use it, I still have product everywhere. So that's why it's down here. <laughs> This next concealer I freaking love, but it's pricey. <laughs> this is the Pat McGrath Labs uh, Mothership Sublime. Let me see, let me get this right. Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer. I got this gifted to me through Influencer. <laughs> I freaking love this concealer guys i love this for my under eyes i love this for spot concealing i love this for a no makeup makeup day using all over my face i ah uh, man this is really good this actually has me curious enough i want to buy the pat mcgrath foundation to try that out whenever i can go shopping again and i just i love this concealer it's full coverage it's beautiful it looks like skin Ugh. I love this concealer and I'm probably going to rebuy it whenever I finish this up, but it is pretty pricey. And then the other two options that we have left in this list, they're super affordable. So part of me is like, it's hard to justify spending so much on a concealer when I know I have affordable options, but I freaking love this concealer. It's so good. Coming in at a very, very tight number two in this list is the Paw Paw Liquid Concealer from Shot Miss A. I... It just amazes me how many great hits Shot Miss A has when it comes to these basic uh, base products. Uh, this liquid concealer, I have the shades Porcelain and Fair Ivory. Porcelain is like my normal, like this uh, shade matches me a lot better so that I could use this on my under eyes. Fair Ivory I can use if I'm using a darker foundation, which a lot of my foundations are and I have to lighten them because I'm pale as hell right now. And so I could use Fair Ivory if I use a darker foundation. If I use something that actually matches me, I have to use porcelain on my under eyes. But this is such a thick, full coverage, creamy, beautiful concealer. I love it. And this is $1.50. And again, love the packaging. Squeezy tube. I can squeeze everything out. I can cut it open. I can get everything out. And then I can recycle it. I love that out of a product. It's also adorable packaging. Like, it's useful and adorable. Man, I can't get over this. I've already used up... No, I don't think I've used up one because I have I have two of them. So I try to like switch between which one I use, but I really like these and I'm definitely going to be rebuying more in the future. And I think eventually I'm going to have to do like a best of Shop Miss A video and just do one big haul where I buy all my favorite products. So that'll be coming probably towards like the holidays this year. But oh my god, I love this concealer. There is one, 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 one foundation or con foundation. There's one concealer that beats it and is my favorite concealer. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser thing. Uh, it comes with this little spongy thing on the tip. I hate that, so I pop it off and I just use it uh, like a kind of squeezy tube. This, I, I definitely have to say that I'm a bit biased now because this is the best concealer for the summer and this is completely sweat proof. I don't know if you've ever like done a full face of makeup and then gone out when it's really hot and then sweat. I tend to sweat like right here, like on the sides of my nose and then I sweat like down here. But because I sweat right here, I would always see the line between my foundation and my concealer right here break down with other concealers. And so like if you sweat, even if I didn't touch it, even if I let it dry on its own, even if I did nothing to my face, I would see like the breakdown between my foundation and my concealer. This is one of the only concealers that doesn't do that. I could go and sweat my entire face off and this or this concealer would still look amazing. 
I have gone through at least two of these. Uh, the shade that I have right now is 100 Ivory, and then I actually just bought a backup because it is summer. So I have the same shade, 100 Ivory, in this new unopened one as well. I love the packaging for this one because it's literally built in to use all of it up. So if you've seen an empty one of these, uh, basically the plunger, because you have to twist this up. So whenever you're twisting the product up, you are pushing it down in the container. So literally you have to use up the entire thing. And you don't have to like cut it open or get anything, you just get it out. That's great product engineering right there. I love it. It's great. The only downside is I really hate the sponge applicator, but you can just pop it right off. Like you can literally just take it off and then you have to clean it a little bit to make sure it's not gross. But then you just have like a little tube and then you can squeeze it out put it on your sponge or on your brush, and then you're good to go. This has a pretty good shade range and it's really affordable. You can find this in most drugstores. So this is really like my go-to, like if I lost everything and I had to run out and get a concealer, I'd be getting this one. So that is it for the concealers. We are now going to jump into my foundations. And just like the concealers, I think we're gonna go from the bottom of the list to the top. So coming in at number 10 or 11, I've got a foundation I just finished, and this is the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation. This wasn't a bad foundation. It's just, it's a lot like the Dermacol for me, where it was really, really full coverage, so I didn't use it that often. I've had this, I think, for like three years. <laughs> Oof, it's been a while. And I just finished it. I talk about this in my next empties video, which I'm trying to look at the schedule like in my head. I think that's coming out on later this week. So if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed so you can catch the empties video when it does come out. But it took me that long to, to use this because I either used it as a mixer to other foundations or just as a spot concealer, which isn't bad, but this is a bit pricey to use for just that. Again, it is very, very full coverage and it's pretty drying. So I found that in like my drier spots, this did not look the best unless I used a super duper duper hydrating primer. I also hate the packaging. This is not a good packaging for this. You've got this lid that comes off and then you've got like this screw thing with the dot. This, no matter how many times you clean this, it's disgusting. I, I don't like it. And it was kind of annoying to use and use up and I, I don't like this packaging at all. I mean, it looks very pretty. Like I would have this out on display, but I, I hated every time I had to use this. I also hated using it. So that, didn't, that definitely didn't help at all. The next foundation, I think it's number nine, but probably I'm gonna have to fix this in post because I can't count. This is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. This, I've definitely gotten more use out of this since I've been in quarantine and staying home because this would not last a full day on my face. Like a full day, like wake up at 5 a.m., do my makeup out of the house by seven, two trains to work, walk there, work a full day, do it all in reverse and then come home. It would not look good. I would look kind of crazy after all of that. And I have plenty of foundations here that do last through all of that. So that's kind of why I really didn't like this at first, but I found if I'm just staying home or if I'm just going to grocery shop or, you know, pre-pandemic, then this actually looks pretty nice. But you can't like put this through the ringer is what I'm trying to say. So now that I've been home and using it as like a mixer and by itself, I found that I actually do kind of like it. But I guess back in my previous pre-COVID life, it didn't hold up as well. So that's kind of why it's towards the bottom because I doubt that I probably should bring this out and use it now because I doubt that when I go back to, if I ever go back to the office, I doubt I would want to reach for this, you know? Next, we have a product that I picked up to try out because I liked another foundation from this company, but I don't like this one as much. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Dewy and Smooth. The, I don't have, I thought I bought one. No, I didn't buy one. The Matte and Poreless is one of my favorite foundations, like ever. It's one of my go-to summer foundations and I don't have it right now. Otherwise, I'd probably be like around number one on this list. But I picked up Dewy and Smooth because I was like, oh, you know, I should try it. I got this a little bit ago back when it was still a little bit cold, you know? I don't like it as much like it's just like an okay foundation but my expectations were here because I loved the matte and poreless so much so because of that I just I don't know I don't know if maybe I, if I had gone into this with lower expectations maybe I would like it more but I've got plenty of other foundations that I like more than this one and I still love the matte and poreless one more than this one so I'll probably use this I might save it for the fall because I'm looking for more matte products right now but uh, it's just a, like an okay 
foundation. Next was a foundation that pretty really came out of left field for me and surprised me. It's not like the best foundation I've ever tried, but it was definitely higher than my expectations were for this, especially kind of just picking this up out of the blue. And let me turn this around. This is from Collab, and this is the Bright Spark Radiant Foundation. And I got the shade Porcelain 01, and I just picked this up. I was at a Sally's in like February, I want to say. It was either January or February, I want to say. And I really went to pick up the collab eyeshadow palette that I have. That's actually in my HP Project Pan. And while I was there, I was looking at the display. I was like, oh, I want to try some other things. What should I try out? And I just happened to grab the, the foundation. And I think mine was on sale, so it was less than the normal price. But I honestly wasn't expecting a whole lot out of this foundation. But it was really good. It reminded me actually a lot of the ABH Luminous Foundation. So yeah, I mean, it did break down in some spots, like around my nose after the full, you know, day. To be honest, I haven't pulled this out since I've been in quarantine, I don't think. So I kind of want to pull this out and try it again now that I'm not really doing much just to see how it sits on my skin, how it plays with the environment. So I was pleasantly surprised <laughs> by this foundation. I think it's because I really wasn't expecting much out of it. So that's why it's like right in the middle or towards the middle of this list. The next foundation I have on here is one I just recently uh, cracked back out of the actual box that it came in. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. And I... I had this, I bought this like over a year ago, I want to say. It's been in my foundation drawer as a backup for a while. And I was saving it because I thought I would eventually rebuy the Fenty, uh, what is it, the matte foundation from Fenty? Because back when I had those two and I mixed them, it was like one of my favorite foundation mixes ever. I actually had a really old video where I talk about the best foundation cocktails that I've made and I'm pretty sure that's one of them. I'll, I'll dig that up and I'll throw it up in the cards if you want to watch. But... That was just an amazing cocktail. I don't know what it was about mixing these two, but it was just like bulletproof summer, uh, sweatproof. My makeup looked amazing all day. This was back when I was working at the bookstore. So not only was I walking a mile to work, I was constantly on my feet, running around in the sweat, in a holding books, stocking bookshelves and everything. And this still looked incredible. So I'm glad that I have it and I'm kind of bringing it back out and trying new ways to use it, but it's expensive. And to be honest, I don't know if I'm going to buy another one after I go through this one because while it is really good it's expensive and there's a whole other half of this list that I love that is just cheaper <laughs> foundations that just do if not as good a better job than this one can so special place in my heart but not something I don't think I would actively recommend. The next foundation is one that I tend to rebuy every now and then when I need a uh, a shade match, and that's MAC. This is the Studio Fix Fluid Foundation with SPF 15. I had to recently go back to MAC, not recently. I think I went back over the holiday, like December or January, to get a uh, reshade matched because my shade was was not my shade anymore. <laughs> I've been getting paler. My family roasts me now because I'm like the palest one in the family, like my entire family. I'm just pale. It's because I stay in this attic and I work in this attic and I haven't gone outside in a long time. <laughs> But I'm pale and so I really had to get reshade matched and so that's, that's why I appreciate this because this also helps me shade match other foundations because for the most part if you go to a website like Sephora or Ulta and you're going through um, trying to find a shade normally uh, the MAC shade finder is like the standard for I guess most of the beauty community and so it's just so helpful knowing your MAC shade whenever you have to find anything else. So I like knowing my MAC shade. I keep it in my description box of every video so that you guys can have a better idea of what shade that I'm at whenever I'm trying new products and it just I, I find that it's really good to know and the foundation itself is it's like pretty good foundation. I think it's a bit overpriced for what it is but I'm willing to pay that to have a really good shade match if you know what I mean and so I try to get this done once or twice a year I'll go and actually get shade match at the store and I'll buy the foundation and then I'll use it up and normally by the time I use it up is when I think I need to get a new one and get reshade matched so hopefully I don't get any paler because I don't don't know what I'm gonna do for shade matches there's only so much white mixer in the world but I do I do enjoy having this on hand and knowing my match all right, we're getting into my top foundations. We have four left. So coming in hot at number four, this is actually almost empty. This is the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream. I've been using this, I'm actually wearing this on my face today with a lot of white mixer, because this is in the shade 27. This is like one of the only warm toned shades that the line has. And 
it's just it's a really good product and I like it but there's no no shade in their line that would work for me out of the bottle I tried a couple of their other shades I actually did a full video on this which I saw has kind of been recently blowing up a lot of people have been watching it which I'm like that's cool but this is a really old video but it was a video where I talked about how much I like this foundation but the shade range is trash and it might be a Korean company, yes, but once you expand, because I bought this in Target, once you expand into other markets and you're like in American Targets and you're in Europe, it's about time you should expand that shade range. It's, it's actually a really pitiful shade range, which is why I didn't want to talk about it too much, because like, even for me, like this is, I have to work a lot to make this work for me, but I really like the formula, which is really annoying to me, but... If you check out their website, I think they have more shades than you could find at like a Target or on Amazon. For me, the shade 27 is the only warm toned shade I think in their whole line. So I had to buy that, which was way too dark for me, and then I lighten it with a white mixer. So it's a lot of work, but I really like it. That being said, this is almost empty. You can actually, I don't know if you can see through it, it's almost empty. So I don't know if I'm gonna repurchase this or. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like I'm probably not going to repurchase this because if anything, once this is done, I'll probably just use the ColourPop one. Next foundation number three, we have an oldie, but a, not even an oldie. This isn't that old. This is from uh, Wet n Wild and this is the Makeup Locker 3-in-1 BB Cream. And I have the shade Fair Light. I think that's... Oh, I have light and then I have fair light. I think right now I am definitely fair light, which is their lightest shade, I'm pretty sure. But I love, love, love love this foundation it is so good it actually duped an 80 dollar foundation from chantakai for me so yeah definitely taking this over an 80 dollar foundation because this is like 8.99 only downside is i think this might have been limited edition which would suck because i like it and that's why i had so many backups because i didn't know how long it was going to be around but i really like this it's a nice light coverage it's a really light bb cream coverage but it looks like skin and it still covers up like breakouts and things and you can build it up too this isn't just like one layer you can build it up without making it look cakey and like gross but you can only build it up really to like medium ish coverage i adore this foundation i just don't think summer is the best time for this foundation because normally in the summer i want you think it, some people can go with lighter coverage things and be fine but i still like to have my good medium to full coverage in the summer so i look for thicker that are or thicker foundations that are sweat proof heat proof waterproof <laughs> but i still love these they're great for me they're best in like the fall or the winter and not only is this the foundation because it is three in one you also get a color corrector and a highlighter in here too so i love these they're great i also have a full video on this comparing it to the chantakai foundation that i duped it with so i'll throw that up in the cards if you want to watch that i think i have to declare this a tie the last two foundations because i honestly they both have pros and they both have cons and i can't pick between them but i still love them both as foundations so here we go the catrice hd liquid coverage foundation which i adore and the makeup revolution fast base stick foundation let's talk about the catrice one first i love everything about this formula it is solid medium coverage you can build up to full coverage i love the packaging it's got a nice little dropper here and it does it might get a little bit messy but it's easy to clean up it's not like the, the marc jacobs one you know i love that it's a glass bottle it feels very fancy and extravagant whenever i'm using it and it's just an amazing foundation that costs less than ten dollars that lasts a full day and when i mentioned before about foundations that last a full day of me staying at home doing not much of anything versus a full day of walking two trains work two trains home this can do both find find you a foundation that can do both and this is it i love this foundation it's so affordable it's so great they recently ex extended their shade range because i also blasted this foundation for not having a great shade range so they did extend the shade range which is great and i actually need to get something out of that extension because this is now too dark for me back when i first got this i bought like three bottles <laughs> which i think that's why i have this is my last bottle i think because i finally finished the other ones but this is in shade 030 sand beige which that's not me anymore <laughs> it's not so i need to find the lightest shade and 
use that one and I'm definitely going to rebuy it because I love this foundation it's great <laughs> it lasts amazing it's a great coverage it looks amazing on my skin and it's so affordable definitely gonna be rebuying that I have kind of a similar issue with this one so this is the makeup revolution stick foundation I also have a shade match problem here <laughs> I go a little bit right there but this is in the shade f2 so this is closer but it's still not a perfect shade match but it's it's closer than the um catrice one this i i love this you know back when we used to travel <laughs> This was my go-to for travel because you can just swipe this on and then blend it out with a sponge and it looks incredible. I love this. It's medium coverage. You can build it up to full. It looks great and it's like honestly it's stick foundations are just so great. And then I love that you can so you can use up the entire stick and then there's actually more under here that doesn't twist up. So then you can like dig it out and get a lot <laughs> for your money's worth. Now, Makeup Revolution is known for great shade ranges. I went to the store and bought this and they had 40, more than 40 shades of the stick foundation, which is incredible. So you could also use this if you really want to contour and highlight with like cream products, you can also do that. Get a darker shade to contour, get a lighter shade if you want to use it just around here. I haven't done that. I probably should. I think that'd be fun to try because I love this formula so much. Not going to do it anytime soon, <laughs> but uh, I love this. I love this. I took this, not this exact one. I had a darker shade uh, last time I was in Florida. I flew down for a work trip and then I did a day at Harry Potter World. And this is what I brought with me and I used every day of that trip. I was down there for about a week. And then whenever I traveled, I traveled last Thanksgiving. And I get this, whenever I travel, this is what I like to bring because it's it's quick, it's easy, it's, it's just amazing. And I love it. So that's why I can't pick between these two. I, I really love them both. They're both affordable. They're both great. So we're going to call it a tie. So there we go. Those are all of my foundations and all of my concealers ranked. Let me know down below what foundations you're using and if you want to rank yours and if there's any other ranking videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.